will 2010 be the year of Sony? The gears were set in motion earlier this week when the internet exploded with God of War 3 fever. The hands of death could not defeat me. Scoring high marks across the board, it gained instant success within days of its release. Building on their momentum, Sony's getting an early jump on the competitors with a live press event months ahead of E3 at this year's Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. Last summer, Jack Tretton, president and CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment of America, teased us with the motion controller. Could the next step in PlayStation's evolution finally be here? Will we see the birth of the first games to take advantage of Sony's spanking new 3D TV technology? Or is it time to usher in the PS4? All these questions and more will be answered. Attack of the Show's coverage of the Sony Press Conference starts right now. Attack. Attack of the Show. Attack. Yes, everybody, welcome to Attack of the Show, TV's only source. For all the stuff you care about. I'm Kevin Pereira. It's good to see you. Hey, everyone. I'm Olivia Munn, and we are coming to you live from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. Big, big, big show today. Of course, on the show today, Sony's huge press conference is about to get going. Yeah. Any second now, we're actually going to take you live to San Francisco for their video game birth announcements. Aw, it's a boy. <laughs> and Gary Busey drops by around the net to open his mouth and let the crazy pour out. Yeah. We'll find out about his future projects, or maybe we'll just see him go... A lot. Is that, do that again. Let's it's kind of what he does. He gets bath. Oh, you missed it. It's fine. It was, it was good. You missed it. Today's WTF is gut sucking. It's, it's, I know, it's like a hula dance, but instead of a sexy girl, it's a fat guy. And he really wants to show off what his belly can do. It's called WTF for a good reason, everybody. And Jack Bauer's main squeeze stopped by. Annie Worsham, before, will get interrogated about the ending the show and her chances of surviving for a spin-off movie. But before we go to Sony, let's get to today's WTF out of the way. Yeah, that's good. It's about something called gut sucking. I explained it to you and I don't really want to know anything else, really. Yeah, you don't. You're right. Just roll it. Let's do it. What the... Here on Attack, we take pride in eating right and staying fit. But on the outskirts of the internet, there are people out there who take a unique approach to keeping off the weight. God, no. Seriously? What the f***? Grab your barf bags and say hello to gut sucking. An overt obsession with having a flat stomach and sucking it in. Although it may appear to be a fetish, gut sucking is in fact a form of exercise associated with yoga. From the stomach vacuum to the belly wave, there are dozens of tricks these gut suckers use to keep their tummies tucked. Like the nollie, a very popular technique where the person sucks their gut in and wiggles their rib cage from side to side. The purpose of this exercise is to cleanse the intestines and eliminate any issues with digestion. Some enthusiasts will even go as far as to fill their bellies with water to slosh around on an empty stomach. Oh, and of course, there's the belly coin flip and water glass trick. Truth is, these exercises take a lot of ab control, so most guys and gals who partake in gut sucking are already incredibly skinny. Except for this dude. He's our exception. The idea behind gut sucking is that by forcing your tummy in, you are flexing your abs and challenging their stamina, which will, of course, help make for a flatter stomach and healthier back. Much like belly dancing. On the internet, there are thousands of skinny enthusiasts all over YouTube who post videos on the best ways to suck that gut in. Whether it's Mrs. Swelly Belly rolling weights on her abs, or a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to flutter your tummy to the beat. The gut-sucking community is alive and well through search engines, but not so much with dedicated web pages. At least not yet. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> oh yeah, PereraStummyCrunch.com. So if you're looking to shed some pounds and love the onslaught of inappropriate video comments, go ahead and suck it in. Just don't mind us when we ask, what the f***? And now everybody around the net waits for no man. Unless that man's announcing some new video games, we yeah. can put the rest of the show on hold. Let's so do it. So we're going to put it on hold because right now we're going to San Francisco for the live Sony press conference. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you all for coming. 
I'm so excited to be here with you to share the news that we have. Today is a special day for the fans of PlayStation around the world. As we officially unveil the motion controller for the PlayStation 3 and its games. For the first time today, we will showcase some of the games that we will available during the whole launch window. We are bringing consumers what they have been asking for, a more precise, responsive, and immersive real-world gaming experience. The games we have today, both on stage and in our arcade for you to try by yourself, will demonstrate that the motion controller for PlayStation 3 will be the solution for both casual and hardcore gamers alike. The type of games that we can create with it are amazingly diverse. Tracking one-to-one -to, -one to your body movement, nothing has ever been this precise, responsive, and ultra-sensory. It has the potential to breathe new life into many well-established game genres at the same time, giving tools to the developers like us to create new experiences that we never would have dreamed of. May I introduce to you PlayStation Move. <laughs> PlayStation Move combines highly precise responsive and intuitive motion control with a full PlayStation 3 HD gaming experience. Here to talk more about that is Peter Dilly, Senior Vice President of Marketing and PlayStation Network at Sony Computer Entertainment America. Thank you. PlayStation Move, that's sweet. Uh, still ahead, we have some funny things in around the net, and of course, yeah. we're going to show you all the games that are being talked about at that press conference. Gary Busey and the Dark Crystal Redoubt, they're next, and more Sony in a box over right here. Stick around, everybody. something special for you today. We have a big dog and a little dog. Yes, but as this video proves, every dog has its day. <laughs> he did it! He did it! By the way, if you just happen to be tuning in for the Sony announcements, welcome to our show, everybody. <laughs> That's what Sony's talking about. Yeah. Where's Anna David when you need her? That's what I want to know. <laughs> A UCLA asking guys. Oh, right, right, right. But I have to say, watching the video, think about it, guys. His persistence, little guy, it paid off. And now there's a new accessories poster that, for that bitch's wall. Look. Oh, yeah. oh that's, oh. Look at that. Does it count as sex if one dog doesn't know it's being humped? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like how great that is. That's good. Affirmations. <laughs> and at number four, the classic Muppet film, The Dark Crystal, gets a dialogue update thanks to the redubbers at Sequential Pictures. Yeah, it seems that even the Gelflings and the Skeksis have been hit by the recession. Oh. <laughs> Give me a dollar, man. Look, I'm drunk. I need to get home. I look, look. I just need. Look at that wall. Look, man. I just need a dollar, please. What is that? Look. Look, man. You're not gonna get a dollar. Damn, dude. That was harsh, 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 harsh. No, don't give him a dollar. <laughs> look, see, you got a dollar. You should give it to me. I would like a bank, bitch. <laughs> what could you do with our dollar? Well, first I would invest. Right, like in a mutual fund <laughs> or an IRA or some <laughs> 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 
Wasn't there a similar scene in Menace to Society? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Although, although thankfully that Skeksis didn't offer to blow bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dear G4 Legal Department, it was bubbles that was not blown. Bubbles. <laughs> bubbles. Coming in at number three today is another clip from a culture that's different than ours, and therefore it's funny. <laughs> we don't get it. Here's what we know about this clip. It's from Greece, and as far as we can tell, this is the real voice of a man named George Tampokas. Tampokas? Take me away. <laughs> Seek it! Seek it! Seek, 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 for love, give me seek, 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 Is why Greece went bankrupt. Oh. Yeah. It's true. Songs like that are half the reason that uh, half of Santorini exploded and sank into the Asian Sea. Look it up, people. Look it up. Look it up. All right. Coming in at number two is a scoop from ITN News about the future of Gary Busey. Yeah, they caught up with him in, uh, in Hollywood. It was on Oscar night. And as always, Gary proved to be... Enigmatic, I guess you could say en enigmatic, yeah. Yeah, and crazy. I'm here to celebrate those that are nominated tonight. And as far as I'm concerned with the nomination, everybody goes home a winner once you're nominated. Tell me, yeet. <laughs> Good move. Can I, can I just ask you quickly, uh, what are you up to at the moment, Gary? I'm working. I can't tell you. You'd have to kill me, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can't move, I like that. I know, it's... <laughs> okay. Don't report this to a doctor. Okay? I'm making a million dollars right now. Oh. I'm going to pitch Celebrity Mentally Fit Club with Gary Busey. Oh. Money from the sky. I don't think he'll make it past the first commercial break, Olivia. I mean, yeah, that's right, because it's better to burn out than fade away. Right? Right, yeah, okay, all right. Set money, your money, money. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest, right here. <laughs> Coming up with shows left and right. I get you are a new media darling. Right. Watch out. In at number one today, an amazing bit of Euro disco from 1986. And in this clip, the band Radio Rama performs their non hit musical tribute to, to the movie Aliens. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> There's two problems. Uh, one, they can't actually pronounce the word aliens. Mm. And two, while there may be a language barrier, we're pretty sure understanding the lyrics wouldn't clarify what the hell is going on here. What you gonna do? <laughs> I had to abort it and go back again because the it's fine. Uh, that was good. I liked it. Let me you. try it again. Thank Keep you. it on a two. Okay, come on. Ready? Yep. On a two, please. On a two. Five, six, seven, eight. Arians, Arians, what you gonna do? Yeah! Yeah! Right, guys. So you think you can dance? <laughs> oh, I know I can. Right. To get your daily viral fix and to check out all the viral videos we have to offer, go to g4tv.com slash around the net. Still ahead, everybody. There is more gaming news from Sony, believe it or not. That's we right. have it. We're heading back to San Francisco. And we're as soon as the live gameplay begins, you will see these games being played. So stick around. It's coming up in seconds.
straight ahead. Yeah, it's actually right now. Let's go to Scott Rohde in San Francisco for more live coverage of Sony's GDC press conference. A big walkthrough on a number of the titles that we have coming out for PlayStation Move. Scott. Thanks, Pete. So at Worldwide Studios, we have been truly inspired by the PlayStation Move. We're going to show you a lot of fun content that spans genres and shows various uses of the platform's technology. The PlayStation Move is responsive, precise, and able to handle both fast and subtle motions. The latency for PlayStation Move is as robust as the DualShock, DualShock 3 and 6-axis wireless controller under one frame, so what you're doing in the real world with the controller will translate exactly into the game. And as a developer, that means we have virtually no limits to the types of genres and gameplay experiences that we can create for consumers. The true 3D rotation and position, along with the buttons and analog trigger, really open up the gameplay possibilities. You're really getting the best of both worlds, the precision of your natural motion, and the realistic feeling of holding a sword, a gun, or whatever it is you're holding. So to show you an example of this, I'm going to throw it over to Jeremy Ray here, who's going to show you a title called Sports Champions, and one of the titles from within that game is called Gladiator Duel, and he's going to give it a show for you. Thanks, Scott. Uh, it's got the game calibrated. This is uh, Gladiator Duel. It's a one-on-one -on -one arena combat game. And first, I'm going to show you a little bit of training just to get an idea of how to use your weapon and how to block. So the first thing I'm going to do is get into good fighter stance. I'm right-handed. That means my left foot's forward, my right foot's back. I'm going to go ahead and swing with my, with my right hand. I can do any sort of attacks I want, and you're going to watch my weapon follow my motion. So I can do overhead attacks. I can do four, four attacks. I can do backward attacks, low attacks. And I'm just going to follow exact, my exact moment, my exact movement, excuse me. As, and on my uh, non-primary hand, I've got my shield. And I'll be able to move my shield around and block the opponent's attacks. So wherever I move my shield around, you can see it's, it's mimicking my motions on screen. So now that we've got the basics of uh, attacking and, and blocking out of the way, let's try to match. Try to juggle her up in the air a little bit. A little jump attack by picking the controllers up. I can, you can do taunts behind your controller. And those taunts will increase that little meter you saw on the bottom left corner, which allows me to do special combo attacks. Like so. Following the on-screen prompt, you can do special attacks. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, Jeremy. So one of the things we didn't mention earlier is that Jeremy's actually using two motion controllers at once, and I think that really adds a new element to uh, the way we're handling our motion control system as well. Uh, the next title that Jeremy is going to show you is from the same game, Sports Champions, and it's the table tennis uh, play during that game. So what he's going to do is show you the precision that comes from uh, a table tennis game. I'm actually a huge fan of table tennis myself, and uh, when I've played previous games, I think there was just a lot of shaking my hand around to get the reaction on the screen. But in this game, it really matters when you put top spin on a ball, you can get, you know, backwards slice, you can use backhands, whatever you want to do, and it's reflected in the game. And Jeremy's going to show you a bit of how that works now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip over the training. This one. And go straight into a match. So starting off with a simple serve, you can see I can rotate, I can rotate the controller and, and choose where, what direction I want to go ahead and serve. By hitting the T button on the back of the controller, it's going to flick the ball up. I can do a simple forehand serve. And you can watch as my paddle is going to be mimicking again exactly my precise motions and angle and speed. Um, I can also do a turn and do a, a, a backhand serve. And I can do some kind of simple Simple hits, uh, slower hits, harder hits, so you can add, add some spins. I'll try to do a variety of shots for you. you know, like a near court hit, more of a far court hit, top spin, chop shot if I can do it. There we go. More top spin. Very nice. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Scott. So as you can see, 
you know, the precision is quite evident there when Jeremy is doing the top three. All right, that's just a taste. Just a taste. There's going to be more. They actually also announced that uh, the, the, the PlayStation Move will be a game, the actual wand itself, the mm -hmm. controller, and a PlayStation Eye camera bundled together for less than 100 bucks. And available this fall. Yeah, coming this out fall. this fall, which is this very fall. cool. You guys stay tuned. We'll have more gameplay live from Sony's big press conference. That's right. Stick around, everybody. More coming up. This portion of Attack of the Show is delivered to you by Pizza Hut. On Wednesdays, get any Pizza Hut wing for one incredible price. From Hollywood to Bollywood. Baba Vikalamro. Nick Goddard. I'm Lake Show. Attack of the Show's exclusive coverage of Sony's GDC press conference. Yes, now we're going to go back to San Francisco for more live gameplay in just a few minutes. Now, earlier, 24 star Annie Wershing breached our security and uh, <clears throat> she did, she killed a few guys. Oh. Yeah, but she was, she was very nice to me, though. She was so, so nice to you. There's that. Jack Bauer has been shot, burned, electrocuted, a whole lot of stuff. But my next guest might have broken his heart. Oh. She also stabbed him. <laughs> Annie Wershing's here, everybody. Yeah. How are you, Annie? Here we go. Hey, nice. hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm confused. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little confused. I know the polite thing is to say, yeah, I'm fine, and just keep yeah. moving on. But no, mm -hmm. I am confused, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, minutes before the interview, I get a, uh, an email saying that... Uh, uh, Kiefer Sutherland has added me on LinkedIn, and he's looking for recommendations. <laughs> and I'm wondering why would he do that? Why would that? Why would that go on? And then I see some news about a possible 24 shakeup. Mm -hmm. Can you shed some light on this situation? Uh, keyword possible. Possible. <laughs> okay. Nothing is officially official yet. There's there's rumblings going on that this might be the last there season are, of 24. Though there are some rumblings, which is very sad. But uh, nothing is, uh, you know, like I said, Fox isn't confirming anything yet. A variety in people that are much fancier than me and Fox are mm -hmm. saying what they think. But uh, uh, X, <laughs> XX Joe Bob 2017 confirmed it on Twitter. Right. So there you go. He told me to, to ask you about it. So I think that's there you go. That's, there's a source there. <laughs> he would did, know. Did you did you learn about the, this possibility from Twitter as well, or did you get a have you even got a phone call or anything or um, I mean, I think everybody's known that it's 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 been in the question, you know, mm -hmm. for for a while. But I did I retweeted Variety's tweet with a f <laughs> you retweeted Variety's yeah, tweet from last night. with a frown face. Oh, yeah. what emoticon says it all. Yeah. Did you do the angry furrow, the, the greater yeah, than sign as well? Just old school. Uh, Classic standby yeah. frowny face. Yeah. That's good. What, what else are you tweeting these days? Um, I think I just tweeted something about being on this show. Oh, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to be excited for the show. You're, you're paid to clap for it. It's cool. Uh, what, what did you tweet? Was it just, oh, another breathtaking interview with Kevin? I yes. Bet, I bet it was exactly. Verbatim. Exactly like that. Yeah. Uh, no, you, I actually know what you tweeted. You tweeted a picture of a, a, little, a little onesie that we gave you. Yeah. Yeah. So congrats on that. That's Thank a big you. development since Thank last time you were here. Yes. Uh, are you going to be uh, one of those women who, who, when we say, well, what's, is it a boy or a girl? We're not telling. Okay, well, what's, uh, what's the name going to be? Oh, we know, but we're not telling. Like, are, are you going to go that route? I think so, yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah. You should. Just <laughs> agonize and frustrate everybody yeah. who asks any question about yeah. it. Uh, no, seriously, congrats on that Thank one. Thank you. And will that get in the way at all of the potential 24 movie? Because I know that that's been floating around. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think it should time. everything should time out perfectly if... Mm -hmm. I am wanted in a movie someday. Uh, uh, would they perhaps weave it in? Could it be Jack Bowers? Ooh. Ooh. Well, I certainly hope it's not Vladimir's. No. <laughs> another, another indiscretion from no, Renee's. You, you, yeah, yeah, your character's had a rough, a rough season. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. What is going on? Did they tell you what you were signing up for this season? Or? I just knew I was going to be a little darker, have some eyeliner. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, that was a big. Hint. They could have given you a bigger heads up than a, than oh, there's going to be a trip to a hot topic. Right. You might be tortured right. pretty badly for hours on end. Right. Um, what about you? Have the the St. Patrick's Day is coming up, of course. Yes. Which is now now the Irish have have their explanation and excuse rolled into one holiday. <laughs> um, how are you going to celebrate? What are you going to do? Well, I was an Irish dancer growing up, so I always go home to St. Louis, which is where I'm from, and dance with all the girls that I used to dance with. I don't know if I'll be doing as much dancing this year. Yeah, you're going to tone down a little or bit. Or drinking for that matter. But That's 
I'm still going to go and show you, my support. You're drinking for two now. Yeah. So really, <laughs> you got to... Two green beers. you, you got to power through. So are you going to go home for the holidays? Yes. Yeah. Going, going home well, good, good. It's, uh, it's, it's the middle of the night right now on 24. It is. Uh, uh, Renee is, is napping after killing a Russian Finally. mobster. <laughs> yeah, which is good. Yeah. Um, are we going to see you back in action soon this season? Yes. Um, I have one more hour of a nap. Which is very needed. Maybe having a snack, <laughs> going to the restroom as well, and then uh, I actually get to have a gun. I'm actually back with a gun. Yeah, which, right. I just realized that Renee hasn't even shot a gun yet this year, which doesn't seem quite right. But it gets back to sort of old school Jack and Renee season seven. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I, I, I certainly hope these rumors don't pan out to be anything more than the Twitter sphere acting up because we love everything you do and we cool. appreciate having you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. For Catch 24 Monday nights on Fox. Right now, we've got more exclusive coverage of Sony's GDC press conference. All right, let's get to it. Let's go back to San Francisco to see more live gameplay. So now I'm going to show you a title that I'm really excited about. It's a great representation on how we've taken an active game and incorporated next-gen graphics and speed to elevate the consumer experience. So if you please welcome Johnny Mack over here. He's going to demonstrate Motion Fighters. Thanks a lot, Scott. So what we can do here, the PlayStation I will detect where I am in 3D space, and as I lean, the fighter moves with me. I can crouch and move around. So unlike other fighting games, I don't just flick my wrists, I have to physically really punch. I can, I can aim my punches high, low, or wide, and I can hook an uppercut. So that's enough of the clean moves. Let's try a couple of dirty moves because this is a street fight. <laughs> that one's always a winner. <laughs> so there's going to be lots of clean and dirty moves. Grabs, holds, finishing moves. So I'm just going to try a tricky dirty move. If I'm not careful, I might fall off stage. No. Ah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> All right, thank you, Johnny. So there's also going to be some additional accessories available for the PlayStation Move. One that we want to show you today is an optional second controller known as the PlayStation Move Subcontroller. This uh, subcontroller provides additional functionality for games such as a shooter that may require an analog stick for moving your character. So you may have seen that last week's announcement that SOCOM 4 is coming to the PS3 this fall. I'm proud to announce that you can play all the way through SOCOM 4 with the PlayStation Move and a subcontroller. And this is a great example of how hardcore games can become more accessible to mainstream audiences. To show you SOCOM 4, I'd like to welcome Travis from Zipper over here. And I want to talk a little bit while he's uh, getting started here. You'll notice that, oh. um, Move out. You'll notice that uh, there's a lot of precision involved here. So not every motion control game involves jumping around and waving your arms like a maniac. There's a ton of precision here. He's sitting in his chair, he's got his game face on, he's completely locked into SOCOM 4, and he's utilizing a great control scheme that Zipper came up with that is allowing him to control the camera and the crosshairs with the uh, motion controller while he's, while he's uh, controlling his character with the left stick.
I want to emphasize a couple of additional things. Um, the fact that uh, the Zipper team um, was able to integrate that technology into the game very quickly with very little overhead on the game. It was a very simple transition to put the motion patrol into SOCOM 4, and that's why we're able to let it play through the entire game. We're very excited about that. And one last thing, I'm just happy that everyone is able to come today, and we showed you a ton of content on stage, but there's a lot more to come in the upcoming months. And there's a whole arcade next door where you can get some hands-on time and play these titles. So thank you for coming. I'm going to kick it back to Pete now. All right. So, Kevin, you got to see a little bit of what was going on there. Yeah. You're smiling. What do you think of Sony Move? Uh, it, it really hard to tell from what we saw there. Um, I, the, the, the less than one frame response is very cool, and mm -hmm. the power of the PlayStation means that the, the types of games that you can do with it will certainly look cool, but from what I saw right now, it seems like they're echoing a lot of what Nintendo did when they showed off their Wii, mm -hmm. and those games were fun for a minute. Yeah. So now I want some new gameplay experiences. Game. Yeah, yes. so, uh, but with anything like this, I mean, the, the whole point of this is the feel, and I have no sense of the feel. Yeah. So until you really get so your hands on something like it's this. That, um, it's, it's that exciting because we already have the Wii, and it's like now it's Sony Move. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the, the Wii takes some of the wind yeah. out of this, this sale, this particular sale, but uh, again, excited for what the technology could bring, and, and gotta get my hands. Hands on with it. It. Yeah, the games could be incredible. So I'm, I'm looking towards E3. I think that's when most people will get their hands on it, when I will probably get a chance to play it, and that's when I'll make my decision as to whether or not I'll pick one up or start evangelizing. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to get uh, a little bit more from Sony a little bit later, but right now, Matt Damon has a new action movie. Oh! And uh, oh, well, yeah, it what is, is not about Jason Bourne. What? So let me finish. Actually, I just have a question. Who exactly does he play? We actually sent Chris Gordon to the green zone to find <gasps> out. That's where he was, just chilling. Chief Warrant Officer Roy Miller has questions, and he's aiming for answers. People are dying out there. I want to know why. Born director Paul Greengrass and Matt Damon team up in Green Zone, a high-stakes action thriller set at the start of the Iraq War, about a soldier whose search for WMDs blows the lid on a government conspiracy. I know what you did. You have no idea who you're dealing with here. What's fact or what's, what's fiction? Because clearly this is read from the headlines. Well, it's a fictional story, but it's set against a, a real world. So, you know, the Baghdad that we show is absolutely Baghdad. And the background of the film is very authentic. I wanted to make a big action conspiracy thriller, but not set in Bourne World. Bring it one step forward into the real world. I'm saying there's a, a disconnect between what's in these packets and what we're seeing on the ground. There's a problem with the intelligence, sir. You worked with a real WMD hunter. Uh, how did that impact your performance? Well, a lot. He was our official technical advisor. He was really helpful going into these WMD sites. You know, I could just henpeck him with questions and say, okay, well, what, you know, what were you thinking here, and what would you do if, if you encountered this? And he was just incredibly helpful. Came here to find weapons and save lives. It's a little more complicated than that. Not to me, it isn't. Paul kept the, the scope of the story, I think, kind of uh, amazing in terms of our presence in Iraq and what choices we're making as a government. And at the same time, I don't think he ever loses sight of the fact that this is a thriller and uh, wants people to be on the edge of their seat. Why are you here, man? I came here to bring you in. Paul is kind of known as letting the reality of a moment kind of play out, but how does that work in the gritty action sequences? My first day, I was just told, jump off the helicopter, take these prisoners. Anyone gets in their way, crush them. If it's Matt, crush them like a bug. And so I just met him, you know, one of the biggest movie stars in the world, and I'm rubbing his face in all the donkey crap on the floor. <laughs> Doing a big action thriller and Paul's camera work, you know, because he comes out of documentaries, it feels like he, he's just trying to capture what's happening. We can kind of take the extra step and go into the, the real world and that people will come with us. You set up whatever you need to set up on your end. I'm bringing them in. One of the things I'm most proud of in this film is that you really feel like you're there with the cross swords and the, you know, the Republican Palace and the, that weird oasis like green zone with the swimming pools and the palm trees. I think audiences expect from me a kind of strong contemporary piece, kind of foot to the floor, adrenaline rush, a great ride. I've got him! Forget what you've seen on TV. If you want to experience the fall of Baghdad, it doesn't get more intense than Green Zone. So I guess Jason Bourne versus the Green Zone opens Friday. <laughs> Web Soup is back. Oh, hey! Believers, we have How video proof because you said it. <laughs> Next on an all new web soup. <laughs> Oh, oh. 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 oh.
This bucket of chum, it's our chum. <laughs> Holy f***. A uh, new episode of Web Soup is coming up actually right after Attack of the Show. Yes, check out g4tv.com slash Web Soup, but wait until after this show before you yeah, do that. This show is awesome. After the break, we're going back to Sony's GDC press conference for one more game. A very special game. We're going to have exclusive gameplay from one of my favorite PS3 games, Little Big Planet. Yeah. It's coming to move, everybody. Stick around for that. Coming up tomorrow on an all-new AOTS, we sit down with the cast of She's Out of My League. Rated on a scale of 1 to 10, we're giving this interview an 11. And in Gadget Prom, we'll play Spy with a motion-detecting camera that remotely sends images to your iPhone and YouTube. See it tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. We are going back to San Francisco for more exclusive game footage of... Little Big Planet. Yes. Finally, Sony's move lets me use my hands on my sack boy. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to switch gears a bit and take a look at how an existing franchise like Little Big Planet can incorporate the PlayStation Move. So this demo I'm going to show you in a bit show, does a great job of showing how you can literally go into the game and manipulate objects. This is going to open up a ton of possibilities in game development and user-generated content that have yet to be explored. So please welcome Leo Cubbin and Kyle Schubel, and they're going to walk you through a little Big Planet demo. Thanks, Phil. Hey, everybody. All right. So as you can see here, we have a little Big Planet level that was created using the same style tools that we use for Little Big Planet, but we've added a new resource. Wait a second. Why is it every time I let you set me up, I'm an address? <laughs> um, it, 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 we've got a new material here that the MC can actually interact with. So I'm going to be playing sack girl, I guess. And uh, Leo's going to be moving everything around here and trying to squish me with a cube. Um, so as you can see, we put a little art on there so that he can actually see in there. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, Leo, you can do better. Yeah, there we go. So... I'm going to be able to move through the environment here, and Leo's going to help me in various ways, like he's moving the platform over to the side so I don't fall into the flaming pit of doom below me. This is another environmental puzzle, very little Big Planet-esque, but this one's showing some of the precision where he's actually having to rotate the, uh, rotate the device over to bridge the gap so I can get across here. So following with the little Big Planet theme, we've even got Abraham Lincoln's top hat, which you just never know what you're going to get in LBP. So he's going to be able to move this around. I'm just sort of along for the ride. He's going to chuck me up in the air to catch some uh, bubbles. And, you know, it's still a cooperative game. Whoop, right, there we go. I'm going to hop back in the hat. And it's still a cooperative game and nice throw. Okay, and I'm going to go right through the rabbit hole. Um, so we can go through here, and he's got various different ways he can interface with me on the, in the device. So I'm going to do a light jump there, and I'm going to get flung in the air. And back on another platform. All of these things were made with the same tools, so the uh, users will be able to create the same level of detail. So here's a very complex environmental puzzle that uh, anybody who's played Little Big Planet is going to be familiar with. If I jump on there, I'm going to land on the fire, so I'll die. Normally, we'd have to use switches, but in this case, we're actually able to use the motion controller, the move, to get me through the environment. Now, if he hucks me up in the air here, I'm going to land on the flaming platform. Thank you very much, Leo, for <laughs> killing me there. So as you can see, you've got various ways you can both be cooperative and somewhat competitive as you're going through the different environment. He's going to try and toss me up on a... He's trying to lob me into the fire again, isn't he? Oh, there. Oh, oh, there we go. Chucking me in the air. And... Oh, oh. Climbing, 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 jumping. All right. So, you know, you've got all these different environments and materials that you can interact with and play through the game. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Very cool. All right, so... To recap, Sony's move is out this fall. It's a wand, a game, a controller, and a PlayStation Eye camera. Yeah, and it's going to be less than a hundred bucks. And that yes. was just a, sort of the tip of the gaming iceberg, since mm -hmm. these are kind of early on demos. We don't know what the full games are going to look mm -hmm. like, or what other games that there may be in development. Yes, but well, we will find out very soon. We will. E3 coming up. E3 is coming up. We'll let you know. Now it's time for another thing, thing we, we found, found on, on the, the internet. internet. That Animator 
Boris Syriac is one of the best animators on the YouTubes right now. Yes. His latest short features original music and stars giant teddy bears yeah. attacking from the ocean. Teddies. <laughs> I'm sorry, who said drugs were hard to get in England? Uh, and I didn't really know that teddy bears were, were such giant dicks. Yeah. <laughs> I used to like them. Yeah. Hey, everybody, St. Patty's Day is right around the corner, and we want to hear how you are going to be celebrating. So give us a call at 805-268-7123, whatever that number goes to, and tell us what you're drinking, what you're screwing. That guy needs to be on there because you are doing a lot of that lately. Little cold and man. also, what you're fighting this St. Patty's Day, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very important. Uh, so, Kevin, real quick, what do you think of Little Big Planet? you think uh, it's going to like the whole... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a Little Big Planet fan. This seems like yet another element added to it. Um, I, I worry that it might take away from some of the platformy elements that people might I, be designing for, like, the motion controls. But I worry that um, I will no longer be able to see you because you're going to be playing the game so much. That is true. That is true. You don't really worry about that, though. You're looking forward to it. Be honest. No, I love your, um, your when you make the beans and rice and then your so spicy sauce. Thanks to Andy Wershing, everybody. Oh, it's going to work with you. Like Chris Hardwick is going to start right now. I cook for you. And you let it sit there.